Good evening. Welcome to our service tonight. We're so glad that you've joined us this evening by way of Facebook or YouTube. And uh, we want to bring some prayer requests tonight. Don't forget, your um, prayer list has been emailed to you, so make sure you check out that. And um, just several names that we want to bring to your attention tonight. First of all, if you could uh, remember Carol Bergen's just uh, having difficulties with her heart rhythm, Cindy Stone waiting test results, uh, Suzanne Drain used to have uh, granddaughters in our school. We've been praying for her for a while. She's having heart issues again, so if you could pray for her. Uh, Andy Wright, this is Jen Beeman's cousin, was involved in a motorcycle accident a week ago. Uh, had to have a partial leg amputation. And so pray for him if you would, please. Um, that's Andy Wright. Julia Rains, remember her going through some health difficulties of late, uh, just really having a hard time right now, and uh, has a, uh, an appointment at Mayo Clinic on the 11th on Monday. So uh, please pray for her. Uh, if you would, please pray for my mother, Nancy Lusheen, uh, took a fall uh, on Sunday and uh, broke her shoulder, her arm right up at the shoulder in a couple places. Um, if everything goes well this week, uh, she will not have to surgery, have to have surgery. I'm sorry. So pray about that if you would. She'll see the doctor again on Tuesday. And uh, so pray about that. And then my dad, Richard Lusheen, had knee replacement on Monday. So pray for him uh, and recovery there if you would. Um, Henry Waddell is in the hospital in ICU. He went in on Friday. And so pray for him, uh, please. Uh, just having some difficulties. And so uh, lift him up if you would. Uh, several have lost loved ones this week. Brother Antonio Perez lost a couple of nephews uh, that were brothers just within, uh, I believe, hours of each other, uh, not together, uh, different locations. But uh, pray for the, uh, this family, please, Brother Antonio's family. Also, Mrs. Reeder, Lee Reeder, lost a cousin, Ronald Falk. So if you can remember uh, the Reeder family and the Falk family. Also, Mrs. Poole lost her Aunt Margaret, and that funeral will be Friday. Preacher will be uh, speaking at that uh, funeral on Friday. So pray for uh, her family, if you would, please. And I'm sure there are a host of others uh, that we need prayer. Uh, and so remember these. Remember uh, Minerva Ponce. Remember uh, Martha Whiting as well, if you would, um, in nursing home and uh, others that are in nursing home or hospital and not able to receive visitors. Just uh, a lot of um, emotional difficulty with all that as well as the physical difficulty that they're going through. And so uh, let's remember to lift each other up uh, and uh, unspoken request, all of these things. And so let's, let's go before the Lord tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and uh, for your love. We pray that you'd uh, bless uh, the evening service tonight. Pray that you'd help pastors. We'll bring the message here in a little bit and uh, speak through them to us, we pray. And pray that you'd help our church family and uh, help us, Lord, to uh, grow closer to you during this time. Help us, Lord, as we are able to uh, watch services online. We're thankful for the technology, for the ability uh, that we have to do that. We pray, Lord, for your healing touch and for your protecting uh, hand, Lord. Uh, several uh, mentioned, we can't really mention them all again. Lord, you know each one, you know the names, you know the situations that each face. And we pray, Lord, that you would help in a special way. Bring healing, Lord. Uh, help these with uh, the virus, Lord, that you'd heal and protect. Lord, keep them strong, we pray. Uh, heal them, touch them. And uh, Lord, we ask for uh, your blessing. Lord, many uh, unspoken requests, many have lost loved ones. There's many, many are hurting. We pray, Lord, you just help them and give them strength that they need, Lord, these days. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time for announcements at this time. Remember, services can be found on Facebook and YouTube by going to our website, BibleBaptistWeb.com. So please take advantage of that. And as we mentioned, uh, we are working on reopening the church soon. We're praying about that, and a pastor is. We're discussing that, of course. 
in the weeks to come, we'll be making more announcements about that. But we want to do it safely and uh, take as many precautions as possible. So remember that. Pray about that with us if you would. We're raising money for our uh, audiovisual updates, things that need to be done. And I read an article today that said there are something like five to seven times more people watching online services than normally of course, with the things that are going on, but it's an opportunity to reach people uh, with the gospel, and services are going able to go all around the world, which is an amazing thing. If you'd like to give towards that, you can uh, go to Facebook, our page there. There's a fundraising site there, and I think we've raised about $2,700 so far, but also you can give uh, online, or you can give, drop it off the church with your tithes and offerings, just mark it as love offering and put for audio visual and do it that way if you would like to. And just take advantage of those things. Remember to be faithful during this time with your tithes and offerings. And then if you'd like updates through text, you can enter 55498 and text the word follow BBC, click the link and enter your full name and follow the directions there. And to just remember to be faithful during these times and pray for one another and to seek the Lord during this time. We look forward to what he's going to do in the days ahead. So those are the announcements at this time. Thank you, Brother Andy. Um, Melinda's going to play here while I sing this old song here tonight. Fellowship sweet 
we shall share at his feet when our all on the altar is laid is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid your heart does the spirit control you can only be and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. All right, get your Bible, if you will, please, and open it to the book of the Proverbs tonight. And we've been going through a series on wisdom from the Proverbs. This is our last lesson in it, chapter 31. It's where we are, Proverbs 31. Verse number 10, while you're getting your Bible, getting set up for that, that old song there teaches how we can have sweet rest and peace and happiness and joy as we yield Him our body and soul. We we put our all on the altar. And so many Christians uh, saved, get saved, but they never really yield to the Lord. And our our Christian life is never going to be happy and joyous until we yield Him our all and sweet render, surrender to Him. And that's the only way we're going to have real peace. And it's miserable if we don't, uh, if we're struggling against the Holy Spirit in our life. When we yield to Him, He gives us a peace and a joy on the inside that money can't buy. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse number 10, we're looking at the section on the virtuous woman uh, in the Bible. I think it's fitting because Sunday is Mother's Day. Uh, But we're ending up here in this series here with this. And the Bible says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships, she bringeth her food from afar. She, she riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands." And let her own works praise her in the gates. I think it's interesting to see if you go back to the beginning of this chapter. The Bible says the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. And so the description of this virtuous woman comes from a woman. It comes from the king's mother. And she's helping her son, guiding her son to find the right mate. Let's pray and ask God's blessing tonight. Father, it's a joy. Uh, to look into the Word of God. 
And Lord, it will be a joy indeed when we can gather together with your children once again the house of God. And we know we're looking for that to be soon. We pray that you'd bless our churches and our land, bless our country uh, with good health, we pray, and uh, remove the fear from everyone. Lord, there's so much of it. And we pray that you'd remove it. We know that you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, and we trust in you. But Father, we pray that you'd keep your children safe and bless our families now and bless our mothers. Mother's Day coming up this Sunday. Help us, Lord, to be good to our moms. And uh, bless, Lord, your word to our hearts now, we pray tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. The virtuous woman. Who can find a, a virtuous woman? There are many pictures here, and we could do a whole series on this, because there are many uh, spiritual pictures of the physical things that are given. And of course, a bride in the Bible uh, is always a picture of Christ and His church, because the church is His bride and pictured as a bride. And so we can take even these Old Testament scriptures and compare them uh, to the bride of Christ in the New Testament. But virtuous means morally excellent or very good, upright. And uh, we, let us remember that, that uh, we need uh, the Word of God to help us. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And it's profitable for all of us. I think uh, sons would profit today by godly mothers giving instruction to them, uh, to their sons, about the right kind of a woman uh, to look for. I know in my own life, my father gave me some guidance there, but my mother also gave me guidance as she spoke to me uh, about that and, uh, and uh, helped me I believe, get the woman that God wanted for me, a virtuous woman. And we see here about this virtuous woman uh, some, some things here that the Bible points out. First of all, she's of great value. The Bible says in verse number 10, who can find a virtuous woman? In other words, she's rare. She's rare. And she's compared here to a jewel. Her price is far above rubies. It's like finding a very precious, precious, rare jewel when you find a virtuous woman. Now the Lord says uh, in Proverbs, a prudent wife is from the Lord. We read that this morning in our early reading uh, in the Bible. Uh, a prudent wife is from the Lord. And so God gives them. You say, well, I don't know any virtuous woman. Well, get down on your knees and pray. And God will guide you, but you've got to listen to Him. And uh, He'll pick her out for you. And you say, I don't trust Him to pick out for me a wife. I'll tell you something, he's a lot smarter than you are, and he knows where the good ones are, and he'll give you one if you'll seek him in the right way with all your heart. But she's of great value, number one. Number two, we see her characteristics here pointed out in verse 11, down here uh, following, all the way down, verse number 11, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her. She's trustworthy. Uh, the virtuous woman you can trust her. She tells the truth, she's honest, and what she's doing and her heart's in the right place. She's trustworthy. Well, that puts everybody at, at rest in the home. Uh, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. And then she's good for her man. Verse number 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Keep in mind there's a woman that's giving these instructions. It's a woman that's talking this way. She's good for her man. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Here's a mother concerned about her son. And uh, all the days of her life, she's, she's this way. She's just the same. She doesn't change. She believes the right way. If she changes at all, she changes for the better. She just keeps improving. All of us ought to be that way and uh, stick by the stuff and be what we ought to be. Then she's diligent in her work. Verse 13 says, She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hand. She's like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. So she works uh, to provide wool and flax, and she worketh willingly with her hand. She seeks it out. She finds it. She finds what she needs. She finds what she needs for her family. Uh, she considers before she buys here, and whatever it is, in verse number uh, uh, 16, says she considereth a field. 
and buyeth it. And so uh, we see here that she's, uh, she is a, uh, uh, she rises early, verse number 15 says, there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, she riseth also while it's yet night, still in the dark. And she has to, especially in the day and age when these words were, were written, you know, uh, when, uh, when uh, ladies had to do a lot, lot more, and men, around the house than we do. We had to do in those days. I mean, even in my childhood, we had a, a wood-burning and a coal-burning furnace in the old house that we lived in when I was a little, little bitty guy. Well, I thought it was great, but my parents were awfully glad when they could get that out of there and put in an oil-burning uh, furnace with a thermostat on the wall instead of uh, buying wood and buying coal and chopping wood and so forth, uh, and that had to go on. But we live in a different day, but there's still plenty of work to do for Mama. Uh, someone has said a man's work is from sun to sun, but a woman's work is never done. I'm sure you've heard that, that old saying. And it's here in this portion of Scripture. It's here. She rises early, verse number 15. There's much to be said for rising early, to get up early. For one thing, uh, everything's quiet in the early morning. It's before, for us, before the phone rings, uh, before there's disturbances, before anybody knocks on the door, there's that quiet time in the morning. And uh, I think a woman needs that to get her sanity, especially if she's got a big family she's trying to take care of. And uh, then she considers uh, before she buys. Verse 16, she considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. So here... Uh, there's much that's spoken of here, many pictures that we could see here, but uh, she's a businesswoman. She's smart, uh, this virtuous woman. She's smart in business. I, heard, I remember had heard a man say here to her husband, he said, he's reading down through this uh, uh, to his wife, he said, I'm sorry. He's reading down through here uh, to his wife these things. In verse 15, she riseth while it is yet night. He said, man, you need to be getting up a lot earlier than you do. And he said, then I read, read toward verse 16, she considereth the field and buyeth it. And he said, no, never mind, honey, just stay in bed. Don't worry about the business part of things. But you know, the virtuous woman has a business mind. Uh, and there's much to be said for that. And of course, we can compare it today to our ladies that shop and, and uh, look for bargains and seek to save money and have a budget in the groceries or, or the clothing or whatever it is, and she seeks to stay in budget. She has, she has a, a business head, and she's smart in this area, and she's strong. Verse 17 says, She girdeth her loins with strength, and, uh, and she, uh, with the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard, the Scripture says, and she strengtheneth her arms, verse 17 says. She's, she's a strong woman. And strong women aren't always got it in their biceps, but uh, it's good to have strong women that know who they what they believe and who they love and uh, that are faithful, loyal. It's wonderful. What in the world would we do without them? And uh, I'll tell you, men and, and children, young people, and, uh, and grown ladies also, whoever of us have a mother that's still alive, we need to thank God for her, and uh, especially if she's a godly woman. Verse number 18 and 19 teach us that she's wise. The scripture says, She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, her hands hold to the distaff. She's, she's uh, putting clothes together. She's providing for her family. She's careful about what she buys and how she spends her money. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. She's careful what she gets before she buys it. So she's wise in this area. And then she's, uh, here are these characteristics of this woman. Uh, next we see she's got a giving heart. If we drop down here uh, to verse number uh, 20, the Bible says she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. And yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She not only provides for her own household, but she has enough to share with others who may be in need. Somebody that really 
is, uh, is needy, the Scripture says, or, or poor here. Thank God He has been merciful to us and helped us, and we ought to help others. Well, she has a giving heart, and she's merciful, and she cares, and uh, she has a soft heart, and who wouldn't want a woman like that? Uh, we certainly need their mercy in our own lives every day. And then she looks ahead. She has wisdom. Verse 21, she's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She's working ahead of time. And you know, I, I think about this, her household clothed with scarlet. There's a picture of the blood of Christ there and that scarlet uh, clothing. And we are clothed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord for it. But she maketh herself coverings of tapestry, and uh, her clothing is silk and purple. It's king's apparel. And so we see that she looks ahead, and she compares, she, she provides for her family, but then she also is concerned about her own appearance and beauty. And there's a lot that goes into that. And so she makes herself beautiful. And her clothing is silk and purple. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. So not only is she providing for a family, she's providing for herself. Now, really, I mean, you look through here and you say, well, this, you know, many ladies look through here and say, well, that, that's Wonder Woman. I can, never, I can never attain to that. Well, God helps us all. Uh, thank God we're, we're not what we ought to be, but if we've been saved for a while, we're, thank God we're not what we used to be. And all of us grow. Uh, the Bible teaches us that the path of the just is, grows brighter and brighter until the perfect day. And so we learn as we go. We learn as we go. And uh, many times we get, we get married. We're just children in our minds. And there's a lot to learn. And we keep learning as we go. But uh, we don't need to compare ourselves with other people. But just to compare ourselves with ourselves individually and that we're growing and being more and more what the Lord wants us to be and learning as we go. But uh, uh, she is here kind of a wonder woman. And she's careful with her tongue. If we drop down all the way down to verse number uh, 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. In other words, she thinks before she speaks. And she's learned a lot about that and learned what to say and what not to say. But she's learned to be a peacemaker. And verse number uh, 26 says, and the end of the verse it says, in her tongue is the law of kindness. What's that mean? It means when her children are fussing back and forth, she stops them and says, all right, don't, don't talk like that. Uh, you speak kindly to your sister, your brother. Uh, you speak, there's a law there, and her law is kindness. We're going to be kind here, and we're going to love each other, be what, we, what God wants us to be and what we ought to be. Uh, verse 25 says, Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She shall rejoice in time to come. I remember my old preacher, Brother Sears, uh, told a story, and I may not get all the details exactly right, but this is what he said. He said, my mother had a lot of children. I and mean, he was one, I think, of seven. I'm not sure if he was seven, seven boys or, or seven in the family, and one girl, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, she had a lot of children. And down the road from where they lived was his mother's sister, and she didn't have children. She didn't have any children. She didn't want any children. And so she lived down there, and she had a beautiful home, and she had nice clothes, and she had all of these things. And she would kind of tease Brother Sears' mother for having all these children, kind of make fun of her a little bit. And then uh, she would say, well, you'd have, you could have nicer clothes if you hadn't had all these children. You could, you could have a nicer uh, home and more money and all of these things if you hadn't had all these children. And he said she would leave and go home and his mother would cry. And uh, uh, she'd because she'd think on it and she'd been talked to that way and 
and uh, she had great difficulty. But he said the time came when we all left home, and he said in a, in a matter of time, both husbands died, and both of the ladies were widows. And she said, one day, my aunt came down, my aunt, as he, as he would say, he's from Massachusetts, my aunt came to see my mother, and she told her, you were the wise one. You've had all these children. I was too selfish to have children. But she said, when Christmas comes, I'm all alone, but you have all these children that come to see you. And Mother's Day, you have the children to come, the holidays and Easter and what's your birthday and all this time. And they come and check on you and they visit you and they find out how you're doing. But she said, I am all alone and I have nobody. Nobody watch after me. You know, and the scripture says here, we think of this woman who's working hard and giving her life as she is and investing herself. But the scripture says in verse number uh, 25, and she shall rejoice in time to come. There's a time, there's a reaping, there's a reward uh, down the road. And, uh, and so her family here, we see her family, number three in verse 27, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. She's, she's alert. Now she's going to get some rest, hopefully, and she needs it. But the scripture says she looketh well to the ways of her household. She puts her household first. And uh, lest we should put it all on mama, all of us need to put our household first. Uh, the, the children need to honor mom, and they need to put her first. And uh, dad needs to put her first and put her up. I'm saying after the Lord. I know the Lord's first in our life, but we need to honor our mothers and thank God for them. And where would we be without them? And, and uh, uh, she's wonderful. Well, her family, verse 11, or verse 11 here says, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Verse 23, her husband is known in the gates. Uh, someone has said, there's an old saying, that behind every successful man is a good woman. And uh, I believe that. Somebody else has said behind every successful man is a good woman and a very surprised mother-in-law. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, part of that may be true, that there's a good woman behind every successful man, and thank God for him. And uh, her family has an opinion about her. Verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed. I'll tell you, there was a day in this country years ago, there was a day in this country, you could say anything you wanted to to a young man, and he would take it. But if you said something about his mother, it was a fist fight, buddy. That was it. And because he had his mother up on a plane like this, well, the 60s changed that, and the 70s, and now children argue with their mothers and so forth, talk back to them. But it just ought not be that way. Her children arise up, and call her blessed. They honor her. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. You know, uh, husbands, we ought to praise our wives and praise them and thank them uh, for how good they are and thank them for the meals that they prepare and thank them for the love that they show to us and thank them that they've just stuck with us uh, through the thick and the thin and all the difficulties. And verse 29, she's a step above. The virtuous woman, she's just a step above other women. Verse 29, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Who? She's the virtuous woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Well, what's her secret? What's her secret? Verse 30 says, favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. She shall be praised. You know, every woman has a secret, you know. Some people, well, other women will say, I wonder what her secret is. I bet it's the oil of Olay that she uses. Or I bet it's the lotion that she puts on, or whatever. Well, uh, the virtuous woman's secret is really no secret at all. She feareth the Lord. She fears the Lord. And here's the real lasting quality of a virtuous woman. You see, 
Well, if our hearts are right with God, then our, we're going to be right with everybody else. And when we're fussing and fighting with other people, we're not right with the Lord. That's why it's important that we stay close to the Lord and get up early in the morning and before every, everything gets busy and have some time with the Lord and let Him open the Bible and read it and let Him speak to us. Read whole chapters of the Bible and uh, read it all the way through. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, the Bible says. God gives it and it's profitable. And the stories here, the instruction that we get in Proverbs, the, the prayers and the songs that we read in the Psalms, uh, the, the layout of the book of Genesis that, that gives us the lives of people, and the history here that we see among the kings, all of these things are for us. The instruction that we have in the book of Romans, doctrinal book there, and, and the Gospels that we have, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all of these things are good. The epistles that give us instruction, correction for church behavior and so forth in our lives walking with the Lord. Uh, these are important. And to spend time with the Lord, uh, to spend time with Him, the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And every woman can be this woman if she chooses. Doesn't let the men off the hook. Uh, God knows we need good godly men. And if we'd have good godly men, Leading the example, setting the example instead of telling mom to do it all. We'd have a lot better country and a lot better homes, a lot better churches. The scripture says here, beauty is vain. What does that mean? Well, it means it's not going to last. You put your, 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 your emphasis there and beauty will fade in time. It's just all there is to it. And we can say whatever we want to say, but it sure fades on these men a whole lot faster than it does on these ladies. But beauty is vain, favor is deceitful, but a woman that feareth the Lord, now that's going to last. She's accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior, and she's made Him her Lord. And she seeks to please the Lord. And in doing and seeking to please the Lord and staying in His Word, her family's blessed as a result of it. She doesn't get these she just doesn't get these virtues from herself. The Lord helps her. And the Lord blesses her as she seeks the Lord. And He answers prayer for her. And He brings bargains to her. And He meets her needs and He helps her in her duties as He'll help all of us if we'll just accept Him and trust Him and call upon Him and live for Him. Well, number five, her reward. Verse 30 says, uh, The woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And uh, she's going, she fears the Lord. And so heaven's going to be her home because she's trusted Christ. And her reward's going to be heaven. But then also, she's rewarded because her family is provided for back here in verse 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household. Uh, verse 21 and 22 here, just a little bit of a review. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. And so she's provided for, her family's provided for, but she's provided for also. She reaps the benefit of all of this. And then she gets praise from the family. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. She deserves it. She deserves it. Moms deserve the praise. Uh, from the family, and they ought to have it. And then the fruit of her hands, verse 31, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Give her of the fruit of her hands. I mean, mom's so good to us, we ought to be good to her. Give her of the fruit of her hands and uh, let her enjoy uh, the blessings of life and help her to have the good things and the better things that she so much deserves. Uh, here, who can find a virtuous woman? Ladies, are, are you the virtuous woman? May God help you. And uh, men, children, family, do you have a virtuous woman in your life? Well, you need to thank God for her, first of all. And then need you, you need to let her know how much she's loved and appreciated and cherished in your heart and your mind. Need to speak kindly to her and thank her 
that she's trying to please you and trying to take care of you and trying to be good to you. And so that's the virtuous woman tonight. And I know we run through it in a hurry there, but uh, it's worth your meditation and thinking on for all of us. And uh, uh, she's got liberty here to do a lot of things. And thank God for the, the mothers that God's put into our lives. And so let's pray and ask God's blessing uh, tonight. Father, thank you for the book of Proverbs. Thank you for the old Bible from Genesis to Revelation. What a powerful, wonderful, uh, priceless gift you've given to us in the Scriptures. And Lord, we pray that you'd use them as you do to comfort us, to lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, uh, to give us the peace and joy that only you can give through your precious word. You've exalted your word above all your name, the Bible says, which it just, I can't imagine it. But Lord, you, this book is supreme, and we thank you for letting us have it. Help us to understand it, and Lord, help us to live it. Now, Lord, uh, Mother's Day's coming up. Help us to be good to our moms and to honor them because you've given them to us, and they're a gift from you. The prudent wife is from the Lord. And Lord, if you've given her to us, then you expect us to honor her and bless her as a gift from you and uh, to never abuse her. And Lord, please give peace and joy in the hearts to our mothers. Answer their prayers. Give them the desires of their heart, Lord. Help them to know that we love them and uh, meet every need that they've got, we pray. We sure do thank you for them. And Father, uh, bless our families now. Help us to be able to be back in church soon, meeting together. We long for it. Lord, make this virus go away, we pray. And help our country, help our leaders, our president, vice president, our Congress, our leaders, governors, mayors, uh, judges. Uh, Lord, help all of those uh, in leadership that we may live a peaceable and quiet life. And give them wisdom, help them make the right decisions. And Lord, help us to be bold in our witness for Jesus that others may come to know you. Now bless us tonight. Give us rest, Lord, we pray. And a good day tomorrow. We thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. And we'll be back with you Sunday morning, 1040, and Sunday night at 6 o'clock. God bless you. Bye-bye.